Dr. Bandy Lee, the medical doctor, forensic psychiatrist, and violence expert, president of the World Mental Health Coalition, editor of the book The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, and most recently the author of Profile of a Nation, Trump's Mind, America's Soul. Uh, you can find her newsletter over at Bandy Lee, Bandy X Lee, B A N D Y X L E E dot Substack dot com. Uh, or just go over to Substack.com and plug in Bandy Lee. It'll pop right up. And uh, the Twitter handle is Bandy X Lee number one. Uh, Dr. Lee, welcome back to the program. I, I read your Substack article uh, titled Gambling with World War III. We must pull ourselves out of this death spiral before it's too late. And uh, was uh, pretty, uh, pretty moved by it. I wanted to get you on the program to discuss it. Uh, uh, give us the underlying premise, please. Yes, uh, thank you for having me on. Um, I've been very alarmed by recent events, of course, as many have been, but it is uh, something that I had been concerned about for quite some time. Uh, many know me as a, for, mostly as a forensic psychiatrist who has commented on the psychology of Donald Trump, but uh, even that was related to uh, my concerns about the growing uh, culture and psychology of violence um, throughout the globe. And we are reaching a breaking point at this time where I feel that um, we're uh, really coming to a culmination of that uh, violent tendency that I've been writing about, studying, and uh, have been concerned about for over 20 years. It, it, it seems that, you know, after World War II, you know, things kind of calmed down after the Vietnam War, arguably, uh, but, but violence is very much in the air right now in the United States. And it seems to be driven by, you know, a relatively small number of Americans, the, the, basically the MAGA movement, Donald Trump's MAGA movement. Um, can you speak to that as a, as a psychological issue, as a kind of mass psychosis, or, or, or is, it, is it not? Yes, it is. Uh, we think of mental symptoms as being only individual, but in fact, mental symptoms are even more spreadable and more uh, socially driven. Uh, in fact, all mental symptoms are psychosocial. So the mass psychosis and the shared psychosis I've been talking about is really a culminating point of uh, the shift in uh, violent tendencies that have been uh, occurring over time. Uh, now, I have also been um, specializing in public health approaches to violence prevention. In fact, that's been my major field. I authored uh, a well-regarded um, textbook on violence, and I had been con con consulting with the uh, World Health Organization on public health approaches to violence prevention since it has looked at violence as a public health issue that can be responded to based on scholarship and science. And so uh, the violent eruptions that we are seeing both in our country and throughout the world were very much predictable and preventable um, and can still be prevented to, uh, uh, to whatever degree that um, that we can intervene, and I would say that at this point, it's in large part driven by psychology, by social psychology and the psychology of the leaders. We're discussing, uh, you know, kind of classic or explicit violence. You know, pe people hitting each other, people people uh, uh, violating each other's space, people killing each other for that matter, threatening each other. Um, can you speak to the violence of, uh, for example, uh, 11 states, I believe now, uh, Republican governors in 11 states have refused to expand Medicaid. So there's millions of Americans who literally have no access to health care. And as a result in those states, uh, you see, you know, uh, lower lifespan, higher rates of infant mortality, maternal mortality, um, higher rates of, of people dying from preventable or treatable diseases. Um, isn't that a form of violence, too? And how does that tie into this? Yes, absolutely. And I do appreciate your often writing about it, Tom, because uh, what it is a form of what we call structural violence. And structural violence causes far more 
excess death, uh, premature death, than any, uh, all the other forms of behavioral violence combined, meaning suicides, homicides, and collective violence, including terrorism, wars, and uh, all manner of behavioral violence, uh, does not even compare to the deaths that result from structural violence. It's over 10 times the rate. And, but we don't recognize it as much as a form of violence because it is, uh, it is hidden, mostly. Uh, it is uh, embedded into our daily lives. It's kind of uh, passive, too, isn't it? Exactly. I didn't and, mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, and, and it's also uh, the most potent stimulant of behavioral violence, hmm. uh, as well as its best predictor. So uh, we have been fearing uh, and trying to warn against um, waves of violence to come and global violence to come with the rise of uh, mostly um, economic and wealth inequalities both within nations as well as between nations. And uh, this, and throughout the time when the world seemed to be celebrating that we had entered this unprecedented peaceable era, uh, we were, uh, meaning um, I and my colleagues have been concerned that very soon there would be eruptions of violence. And I pretty much see what's happening in our country as well, the divisions, uh, the the very um, uh, violence prone and violent rhetoric using presidential candidate, former president, uh, as well as his followers, have very much to do with the uh, with the socioeconomic conditions that have given rise to this kind of uh, psychology as a result of deprivation, um, lack of education, health care. Uh, livelihood uh, coming down to dignity and identity. And all these things uh, have a consequence and, and we're seeing those consequences play out in the global stage. Back in the 1960s, uh, I was a member of uh, SDS at Michigan State University. And um, a couple of people I knew went off into the weather underground. One of them ended up in federal prison for a number of years. Um, embracing violence essentially and, and they were largely rejected by the rest of us I, you know in fact I, th I would argue that they were we were left and they were right uh, uh, now we're seeing uh, I mean it's been 30 40 years since there's been basically any violence committed by anybody on the left as political violence anyway and yet the uh, in fact the I guess over 90 percent of all murders the politically motivated murders that have been you know, done in the United States over the last two decades have been from people on the hard right. What is it about the, that, that kind of right-wing authoritarian politics that has so seized now, apparently, the GOP, that, uh, that, that ties them to, to violence, that, that provokes violence, that, that, that often leads to violence? Yes, uh, I would say that um, whether it's the left or the right, wherever authoritarianism adheres to, and, and we have seen uh, left-leaning uh, left governments become authoritarian. But uh, my concern as, as a public health specialist and physician is that um, the level, when, when the level of health and the level of mental health falls, then there is a greater tendency for violence. In fact, violence might be uh, seen as a barometer for societal mental health. Um, uh, my colleagues and I uh, did a study about 10 years ago looking at the two different parties in the United States, uh, not in terms of uh, ideology or policies, but purely in terms of violent death rates. And uh, astonishingly, we found that over a 110-year period, um, almost without exception, whenever there was a Republican president who was elected, the murder and suicide rates would double. And uh, whenever there was a Democratic president elected, 
the murder and suicide rates would have. Whoa. And uh, it was not very um, apparent to the public because there would be there was a two year time lag, especially with murders. Mm-hmm. And uh, and of course, we have election cycles that tend to alternate. And so it was very masked. Uh, and, and we um, controlled for changes in economy, such as unemployment rates or uh, general GDP. And so it was uh, basically not related to their economic policies, although their economic policies quite um, diverge as well, as economist Larry Bartels has shown that uh, whenever Democrats are elected, we tend to do well, uh, prosper, both in terms of, not only in terms of unemployment, but also in terms of uh, rising GDP. Um, But also, uh, we see a change in violent death rates. And so that showed that there was not just an ideological difference or a policy-driven difference, but uh, a difference based on whatever the party brings, whether it's rhetoric rhetoric or uh, public perception, uh, the party alone made a difference in violence rates. That's absolutely astonishing. Dr. Bandy X. Lee, uh, check out our Substack newsletter. It's free. It's really worth subscribing to Bandy X. Lee. It's spelled just the way it sounds, B-A-N-D-Y-X-L-E-E dot substack.com, Bandy X. Lee, number one over on Twitter.